Hi again everyone, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous and here is her story. Hi Ollie, Happy New Year. Thank you for taking the time to read my letter and thank you for your channel. I made a contribution would like to remain anonymous. I need some of your sound advice on getting over narcissistic abuse. Long story short, I previously worked in an industry that was male dominated and women were only viewed as secretaries or girl Friday helpers to these type of men, basically to serve them, do all their paperwork, get them some brownies and milk and sit quietly. A few of the men in particular would act overly religious and even go to the extremes of having everything in their offices with religious pictures or scripture hanging everywhere. Yet, they would be lying, coveting, womanizing to the point of criminal, mismanaging clients' funds, robbing from Peter to pay Paul, but they would act all high and mighty. The financial statements would never lie, though. One big show. These guys would make fun of everyone and, and always make comments about everyone. They were always quoting scripture or starting or stating who in the office was a sinner or not a sinner, who was good or who was bad. It was as if they were playing God. Even after a couple months, I would start getting severe headaches or stomach aches listening to their crap. Instead of just being average and normal, they would have to act grandiose and arrogant. A couple of the men in particular would aggravate any woman under the age of 30. They would make gross sexual comments, grope or demean different women in different departments, stand around asking sexual questions in the lunch or break room areas. I don't even know where this could possibly occur anymore in current day, in, 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 in modern day. Like where it's that open. Unless it's like, well, it seems like it's some kind of financial house. So those are pretty much known for those overly aggressive types. So it would have to be, because you're talking about financial statement, client finances, I'm imagining it's some kind of financial management. So those usually are male dominated. I am still surprised even in this day and age that they would be able to do that that openly like that. They were constantly asking personal questions and thinking it was okay to do this. How could some of these men act so religious and innocent and then in the same token be such assholes? Because they hide behind their religion. Listen, man, when any, whenever people are, are, are throwing their religion around like that, okay, be careful. Be careful. Because it's, it's, it's just an excuse. Because the first thing when they get caught, they do, oh, I'm a... I'm a man of God, or I'm God fear. I'm bullshit, bullshit. One of the managers who had been married and divorced umpteen times would give long, detailed accounts of how his ex-wives were either gold diggers, worthless, stupid, old psycho, or too emotional. He especially had scripture and etc. everywhere and books on marriage, leadership, and ethics. He loved to get people to lose their minds at the office. He would put the copy machine at different sizes or remove the ink on purpose as to set off or set it to make 100 plus copies of things when you only needed one copy. He would unplug certain electrical cords and move equipment on purpose. Yeah, it's like a, like a constant prankster. He dumped yogurt into the main milk creamer one day just for a joke. Yeah, it's a frat house. Is, is 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 what it is, okay? He would remove the toilet paper from the bathroom. They would set up meetings that day, and then everyone would rush to reschedule anything they had going on, and then the last minute cancel the meetings. It was like dealing with immature teenagers and then adult executive men. It's a frat house. It's a frat house mentality, Okay, that's exactly what's going on where the joke never ends. The party never stops. It's a constant frat house. And it's 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 like one of those. Um, what the fuck was that that movie back in the day when uh, Ben Affleck and um, Giovanni Ribisi were uh, stockbrokers. It wasn't Grindhouse. It was some kind of house. But it was like just basically giant fraternities. Giant frat parties, you know, 
frat boy mentality, and then they hide behind religion. And, you know, they're, they're, they're just hypocrites, you know? Just total hypocrites. Most of the decent, insane employees started to suffer with anxiety, sleep, sleep problems, and really bad adrenal fatigue. Yeah, well, when you're living in a uh, when when you're working in a frat house, you know your, your nerves are gonna get shot. We were working our asses off and making up for the slack. One of the younger girls ended up in the ER with severe chest pains, all stemming from anxiety and stress. It was ridiculous what we had to tolerate. The HR department didn't exist because it was a smaller company managed by the owners. What is truly sad is some of these men didn't think anything of the damage they were causing. It's like normal behavior to them, especially when dealing with company clients. They would always blame the client for every issue, or if there was a financial issue, it was the client's fault, or the accounting department's fault, or the weather's fault, or their ex's fault. They never thought for one second any issue could be their own self-created problems. Maybe if some of them actually showed up and did a thing called work instead of playing on their cell phone, showing up two hours late in the morning, leaving for two hour lunches, then going home an hour early, then their real work might have actually got accomplished. They were too good for that. It was above them to actually spend eight hours doing something productive. It pisses me off so bad on what malignant narcissists pull. Seriously, it has to get old for them to put up such a charade, a facade, completely fabricate everything all the time. I got literally drained just being around them for the two hours a day when they were actually there. They'd stand around thinking that they were hot stuff men and middle-aged demigods. A lot of these men are in trouble from every angle in life, and I'm pretty sure God can't be mocked up, can't be mocked, and he's up in heaven face palming it with some of these guys. How does one move on from this? I'm not a wuss, but literally I feel as my life got totally screwed up beyond all belief by these executives. I felt worthless, like I was con degraded, lied to, abused. For years I've gone over and over in my head how how I have stopped how could I have stopped this sooner? You couldn't. You could only by leaving, quitting. No contact, whether it's quitting no contact or no contact from your narcissistic family. The only way you stop it is to leave. The only way you stop it is to leave. And then to, to step back and analyze what's going on here. Let me finish here because I'm almost at the end here. How did I allow myself to get hired into this type of company in the first place? Well, listen, well, look, when you need a job, you need a job. Okay? So how you ended up in a company... You applied for a job. They hired you. It was probably the best offer you had at the time. Don't overanalyze why you, why you ended up working for an employer that didn't work out. The problem is, is these financial houses um, are nothing more than, it's old school. Okay, it's middle age fraternities. And that's how they run, like friggin' frat houses. That's why they're so exhausting. That's why they're so, because it's, it's a party that never ends. And fraternities are nothing more than just fucking blatant hypocrisy these days. Blatant hypocrisy. Why didn't I think I was worth sticking up for myself sooner? Because you, cause you're getting a paycheck. And who wants to have in the back of their mind, well, what if I get fired? That's why. Because it's terrifying to lose your job. That's why. Security. Why do they pull the religious card if they act so selfish? Because it's a tool. Religion is nothing more than a tool of the narcissist. To, to, to show their virtue. Okay? They use the religious card because it's, it, it, it entails faith. It's not something that they have to physically prove. You either believe it or not. So it's a vague thing that you just got to believe. Oh, well, he's a man of God. But it don't work. They're full of shit. I felt exploited, coerced. How does one get over this? To stop ruminating or thinking about this shit day in and day out. It literally caused me PTSD. And I have lost my ability to trust people. Thank you for your time. I will tell you this. Even to this day... I still have three fight arguments and I had I had in my head at Macy's with executives. Okay, where I should have said this, I should have said that. Look, 
it's just about, you know what, I'm mad I didn't stand up for myself at the time. Okay, but this is different when you're when you're dealing with an employer and a paycheck and how you're going to pay your bills and put food on your table. You're going to take tolerate more bullshit. It's it's different than just going no contact from your narcissistic family. Okay, now there are ways to do it. Now you can ask yourself, well, why did I put up with it for so long without seeking another job? Now there is your question. What led you to put up with it? Not led, what led you to get hired there. You got hired there because they, they gave you the best offer. What led you to put up with it? What led you to lack your confidence, to pull, drag your confidence to a level that said, I have to try to put up with this or fix it, okay, because I have nothing that, that why I, I, I can't go find another job. I don't know. There's a million jobs. Instead of just saying, you know what? This place isn't for me. I don't like this. I'm going to go find another place to work. We don't do that. That's the question you need to ask. Okay, because what you found out was is that you were working in a college fraternity. And that's what these financial houses are. Okay, look, they're born liars. Of course, there's Narc Central. <coughs> Any kind of industry where you're selling something like that. Okay, it's all bullshitting over the phone, fast talking. What's this? What's that? What's this? What's that? It's all lies and deception. These guys tell lies to everybody all day, every day. And then you start feeling powerful when you're getting people to hand over your money, hand over their money, hand over their life, hand over their finances in your hand, and then they get a God complex. You got to understand where this comes from. And I can do anything. You know what? Fuck it. I had a great little just going to bring back a college. I'm going to run this like a fucking frat house. And that's what you had. Okay, you have narcissists literally in control of other people's money and other people's futures and other people's fortunes. They get them. To trust them, usually over the phone, with some fast talking and some bullying and some lying and manipulation all day, every day. Is it any wonder huh, where all this toxicity would come from? Unchecked. So, <clears throat> I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution and your story. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and expanding. Because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.